Joe was fo- focused. I specifically asked Joe what accents had the culprits. Joe was very sure. He said they were not traveller accents, they were not Dublin accents, and they were not northern accents. He stated that they were local border accents. Joe had spent over 20 years on the border. He was an experienced detective and he would know his accents. This was the key piece of information for me to get up and running. So obviously that's an extract from the book, How to Make Money from Your Mother, Friend and Colleague, uh, written by Pat Murray and Robin Schiller. Now we have shown already a number of absolute total lies in this book, anomalies, um, factually incorrect um, details and factually incorrect information. But this goes in be- beyond the, the pale, so to speak, because what we have here is the actual point in time where Detective Gaudet and not done who lost his life. Probably the most vital, obviously, the most vital uh, time in this whole uh, brutal case where Detective Garda Adrian Donahue was brutally murdered. So you've heard what I've read from the book there. So this is the actual facts and we're going to look at statements and testimony from those who were there at the time the Garda Adrian Donahue lost his life. And let's compare to facts to what Pat Murray somehow got into his head, ran with and made a complete mess of this most serious investigation. So I'm going to bring up here first extracts from the statement of Detective Garda Joe Ryan. I recall speaking to the Garda Andrade on his mobile phone. The radar with the shotgun was tall, about six foot to six foot one inch. He was thin billed with a dark balaclava over his head. It had slits in the eyes. I'm not sure about the mouth. Again, we must look for omissions here. And Robin Schiller should be absolutely and totally disgusted with himself. Because Joe Ryan is saying quite clearly in a statement, and this is when Joe Ryan was debriefed at the time of the Northern Robbery. And it follows on through the court cases and testimony. We, we will look at that. And not a mention of this in the book. And we'll see how he actually twists the words about the accents. But Robin Schiller was at the courtroom, and he was there uh, during both testimonies, during Aaron's trial, and again when Brendan Trainer and James Flynn uh, were acquitted for the Northern Robbery at Lordship Credit Union. So how a mainstream journalist is buying into this is absolutely disgusting. Mary, we understand, is not mentally well or stable, or otherwise he would not be going around doing a promotion for his book to make money uh, and highlight the lies and the contradictions. The fellow was shouting and roaring, and I couldn't place the accent. Joe Ryan is telling us there that's actually an extract from his statement at the time of the Northern Robbery, and he couldn't place the accent. Mary's trying to tell us in his book, Joe had over 20 years experience on the border, he was an experienced detective, he would know his accents. And he tries to say, and they're not, not, he stated that there were local border accents. That's not exactly what was said whatsoever. Joe Ryan did not know the accent of the radar with the shotgun. Notwithstanding the fact that he's six foot one or two, and or six foot or six foot one, and in other statements, he has said six foot two. And we know that Aaron Brady is five foot seven. Mary and Schiller have totally omitted this from the book. It is absolutely disgusting. It is a showing total disrespect and disregard for the life of the tech guard Adrian Dunne. Uh, the radar with the handgun was smaller, about five foot six, five foot seven. He had a grey coloured tracksuit, bottoms on, runners. A uh, dark top and wearing a balaclava over his head. He was wearing dark coloured gloves. His accent was bald or loud or monon. Again, <clears throat> nothing very specific here about accents. Bald or loud or monon covers a, a vast swathe of an area. Those um, who live to the southern side of us, where we live in the border in Armagh, uh, is totally closer to Dundalk, is totally different to the people um, to the west of us sort of heading uh, in the direction of Monaghan Town, Clontibbert, that whole area, even around Castle Blaney, totally different accents. Very nuanced accents. And the thing is here, Joe Ryan couldn't really place any of the accents. And this continued. It's not that this was just during uh, Joe Ryan's statement. We also have it here. Now, this is from uh, Breaking News. And again, this is giving... 
uh, Joel Ryan's testimony. Yeah, so this is Joel Ryan's testimony. And as you can see, um, it's from uh, February 23. And again, this is during the course of uh, the trial of James Flynn and Brendan Trainer, who were acquitted. These men uh, were not involved in the Northern Robbery at the Ultra Credit Union, as indeed Aaron Brady was not involved in the Northern Robbery at the Ultra Credit Union. But uh, this is just the headlines Al Vulcan Kilu detective feared for his life during the raid that left his colleague dead. And we move on now to the next. Again, this is Joe Ryan's testimony back in 2023, 10 years later. He said the man at the shotgun was tall, about six feet to six feet, one inch of thin build with a balatav over his head. He said the man roaring and shouting and he couldn't place the accent. So again, come back to Mary's lays in this book, How to Make Money. It, it is what it is. It says it's incorrect. It's a false narrative that is somewhere embedded in Pat Mary's mind that this accent was a wonderful uh, piece of ingenuity by him. And we look at loads of details of it now uh, coming up very shortly. The radar with the hand was smaller by five foot six, five foot seven. He said the accent was bother loud Monaghan. Uh, he wasn't as thin as the first man and a more athletic build. I would say both of them are in the 20s. But I'm basing that on the build and the way they ran. So everything about that there uh, totally contradicts where we find ourselves today and where we find ourselves listening to Pat Murray spouting absolute nonsense, something that is in his mind that does not ex exist in reality. And of course, we have the another serious omission from... Uh, Pat Murray and Robin Schiller. Robin Schiller was in the courtroom for uh, the testimony of this girl, uh, Bernard McShane. And you can see this is an overview of the car park. We've circled the car where uh, Bernadette was parked in the Credit Union car park. She was attacked there by a radar. And um, if you just see down below, of Bernard McShane, the guardian that interviewed me on the night was from Dublin. And when he said the sentence, give me the fucking money, it reminded me of him. And again, we will move on. And on the cross-examination, and uh, this is very noteworthy here, that, and it shows quite clearly that Logan Stain, Brendan Graham, and the DPP in Ireland are totally complicit in hiding the facts. Uh, why would they not have asked what accent had he? This was to give evidence to the judges in Brendan uh, Trainer and James Flynn's trial. And this would have been vitally, vitally important evidence. But it was only on the cross-examination, as you can see here, uh, cross-examination, the witness agreed with Sean Gearn, uh, senior counsel, defending Mr. Trainer, that in her statements to Gardy, she said that the man had a Dublin accent or close by. She also com confirmed to Brendan Condon, uh, senior counsel for Mr. Flynn, that the man at her car was bulky and not slim. And again, these are the facts that Shilla and Mary have left out of this trash book and are completely and totally hiding the facts and the details. So once again, Joe Ryan, we've shown you numerous examples uh, from his testimony and from his statement. He did not uh, know the accent of the person with the shotgun. The only other person he heard shouting was the person with the handgun with, uh, he said, the loud Monaghan accent. So Pat Murray has jumped on a piece of information, got it into his mind, and he has told us. And as you will see in his book, this was the key piece of information for me to get up and running. So what we're going to do now is just going to have a quick look at a few clips that show quite clearly how Mary thought this was a wonderful piece of investigation, investigative work. And it would seem that Mary somewhat believes that no other detective would have thought of asking Joe Ryan about the uh, the accents of those uh, who attacked Lordship Credit Union and who brutally murdered Detective Guard Adrian Dunham. So I think the first one I'm going to have a quick look at here now is from um, Crime World and Nicola Talent. There was huge emotion. You know, like mm. Really, you, could, you were walking through it. like. And I went to the incident room and uh, it's a big table and uh, it's the conference table. I went down, there was nobody sitting at it and they all looked around at me 
I sat down and uh, I could see really Joe would have the information that I would require. So I took Joe and one of my detective sergeants to my office and I sat him down and I asked him, I said, Joe, just tell me in your own words what happened. Like, And we had a good chat and uh, yeah, Joe was relatively calm considering what he had and he witnessed, yeah. Oh my good God. And uh, they're from a uh, crime world and Nicola Talent is fully aware of the details of this case. Um, she did previously cover Aaron on a hospital visit to Dublin and uh, we made it very clear that there was issues with Aaron's case and we know she was aware of those because she referred to um, us getting back and she had a pylon or something wrong with her at the time. So she's fully aware of the details of the case and she too is sitting like a Muppet uh, listening to Pat Mary. And just to listen to Mary explaining here, and this is something we can't understand. He walks into a big room in the dock, there's a big table, big conference table, and there's no one at the head of it. And uh, Pat Mary takes it upon himself to install himself as the head of the investigation. Now, I'm not sure how any organisation works, um, particularly, obviously, on Garda Sheikhovna, but um, if Donald Duck or Mickey Mouse had to come through the door at that time and there was no one in the seat, well, in fact, they may very well have been better with either of those two characters. But that gives us some taste for Mary's uh, mental um, thinking and his mental agility that um, everyone was looking at him and everyone wanted him is, as a, the lead detective in this case. And I would suggest from uh, anecdotal evidence and evidence we have, and indeed Mary in the book, and in a particularly a making of a detective podcast, uh, lets us know very clearly that he had an absolutely terrible working relationship with uh, those around him and particularly those above him. So um, that gives us some idea of Mary's state of mind around the, uh, the table in Fort Apache. And we'll move on now. We're going to listen to a little bit just from LMFM, the local radio station. And again, we've critiqued this uh, a number of times also because it is the radio station from the area where Adrian and Donahue worked, Adrian and Donahue worked, and where Adrian and Donahue uh, obviously lived. And um, they would have been aware of Adrian Donahue because of Adrian Donahue's activities through St. Pat's in Lordship. So LM would have been fully aware of all the details of this case and obviously the local residents and credit union workers who were involved at the more than robbery scene and th those uh, people that were traumatised during the robbery. So let's have a little listen and we'll see again how Mary contradicts the facts. That particular evening, yeah. but you had a list, and and this yeah. is in the book. It's great. A list of twelve names and yeah. suspects, almost immediately. Yeah. Well, what happened is I I brought Joe to my office, and I said to Joe, "Look, he was the man that was there. He was able to tell me, you know." And he went through everything what happened and the whole lot. And I just asked him, "What were their accents like?" And you know, you have to keep in mind, Joe was twenty years working on the border, and Joe said to me, "Pat, they weren't travellers. They weren't Dublin accents. They weren't Northern accents." were local border accents so that led me that's my first starting point <laughs> that is uh, pat Murray there with jerry kelly from lmfm and i just left a little bit in there where jerry kelly mentions this list of 12 names and indeed if you go through the transcripts of the court case if you go through the statements of pat Murray, and particularly if you listen to Murray in uh, these podcasts and other uh, local stations uh, he has um, done interviews with the list is 12 it's 14 it's 15 it's 20 aaron's fifth in the list second on the list third in the list it's it's absolutely uh hair wire stuff and um although it has very little to do with anything but it just shows that the man is just making stuff up this is what we have to look at here and then he tells us that um I just asked, he asked Joe about, I just asked Joe for his account. He has 20 years experience, so there's no doubting Joe Ryan's uh, ability to take in detail as a member of the Garda Shia And as we said in uh, Joe's statement, he couldn't make out the accent of the man with the shotgun. 
Plus, again, Mary in this case, instance, and indeed Jerry Kelly is fully aware of the Justice for Aaron Brady campaign, and he knows full well Joe Ryan told the court, told uh, those who were interviewing him uh, to take a statement that the man who shot and murdered his colleague, <coughs> uh, Adrian Donahue, was six foot, six foot one. And indeed, I think it is time that we must say to not only Pat Murray, uh, Mark Phillips, uh, all the others, Garrett Kenna, Gary Kenna, all these people, uh, the DPP, uh, Junior Council, Logan Stain, Brendan Graham, they know for a fact that the person that Joe Ray had seen that night with the shotgun physically cannot be Aaron Brady. And these people are continually just totally disregarding the life given by Detective Gard Adrian Donner, who when he was brutally murdered by a man who was six foot, six foot one, and indeed possibly six foot two or six foot three, which are also in Joe Ray's statements. So this must stop. What we're showing here is the bedrock of Pat Murray's investigation. And he says uh, quite clearly, this was my first starting point. Uh, this thing with an accent that simply doesn't exist. Joe Ryan said he couldn't make out the accent of the man with the shotgun. So we're going to listen to now, I think, a couple of clips from the making of a detective. And indeed, I would ask people interested in this case, please listen to these podcasts by Pat Murray in association with Stephen Breen. And that is the star of the sun, some of them rags. Uh, please listen to the podcasts involving the more than robbery at Lordship Credit Union, because it gives a good insight into Murray, uh, his mindset and mentality. It gives a very, very good insight into the turmoil, the complete turmoil in Dundalk Barracks because of the mess Pat Murray had made from the initial part of the investigation. Indeed, Murray was off ill. He came back at the end of 2016. Uh, like we're talking nearly four years later, at the end of 2016, three years, nine months, three years and 11 months. And uh, he tells us that we had nothing, absolutely nothing. So the initial part of the investigation was a complete another mess. What did Murray do? Reverted back to uh, framing our son Aaron because he knew he got it wrong in the beginning, but he had nothing else left. And uh, so we're going to listen to these uh, two little short clips from Making of a Detective. And again, it shows how Mary is going around peddling this story. That is simply false. It is a barefaced lie when he says, uh, Joe Ryan told me they had um, bother, local bother accents. Uh, nothing could be further from the truth. So let's have a little listen to these. He needed to get things moving, and moving quickly, but the men and women around him were still trying to process what had happened to their colleague, their friend. He went straight to the incident room and tried to get a plan in place. At the top of the incident room there was a big table, which is the conference table, and there was nobody sitting at it. But when I came into the incident room, they were all looking at me, like people just looking at me, like, you know, so I went up and I sat in the centre of the conference table in the position of where a senior investigating officer would and I looked around and I saw Joe Ryan there and Joe was with Adrian when Adrian was shot and I think, God, how is he here? Like Obviously shock hadn't hit him at that stage. So I asked Joe, I said, will you come to my office? And I brought one of my detective sergeants with me, Sergeant Kieran Reedy, Detective Gallagher Sergeant Reedy, and I brought them up to my office and I sat Joe down and I took out my notebook and I said to Joe, tell me what happened, just talk to me what happened. Hours later, back in Dundalk Garda Station, Pat began to gather as much evidence as possible. He asked Joe Ryan to relay any details that he could remember. I said, Joe, tell me what accents had they got? And he says, Pat, they weren't Dublin accents. They weren't travellers, they weren't northern accents. He says they were border accents. And Joe has been, whatever, 30 years or 20 something years on the border. He knows border accents and he knows local criminals and he knows what people. And he says, no, Pat, they were local border accents. And I said, no, that's grand. He described what they were and he described his best. Oh, and I took all those notes and I went back downstairs and this is where it all started. 
there we have more of Mary's pathetic uh, rhetoric uh, that was given in this um, series of podcasts, podcast making of a detective. Please listen to the making detective and anyone is more than welcome to contact just for our Brady campaign. And we can ask, is there one piece of information in the, those four podcasts that would actually point towards Aaron uh, being involved even in the more than robbery of Lodge and Credit Union? It is all rhetoric when it is looked at correctly. Again, he goes in the big table, head of the table, the man is deluded. And he went up and he took the, where the SIO, the senior investigating officer, would sit. And he just went up and sat down in the chair because everyone was looking at him. Uh, again, he asked um, Joe to relay any details he could remember. Now, I am sure, and we've seen the statement, uh, Joe said he couldn't uh, discern the accent of the radar with the shotgun. And he said the radar with the shotgun was six foot one, six foot, six foot one. Now, Pat fails to tell us that during the course of any of these podcasts or radio um, radio station interviews he's undertaking when he's going round peddling a, a trashy book uh, to try and make money on the death of his colleague. And he mentions all these things about the um, radars with the accents on numerous occasions. And I will say once again, he is a layer. He has made it up. It is something that is ingrained in his mind that is false. It is incorrect. So uh, any semblance of credibility going towards Pat Murray is totally uh, unjustified because the man is just peddling a tissue of lies. The basis for his uh, investigation, I repeat again, this is where it all started. And again, not a mention to LMFM, not a mention of six foot, six foot one, not a mention of the Dublin accent, nothing. The man is deranged. So um, just to finish off, we're just going to listen to a couple of, uh, another clip from uh, the making, uh, the prime time uh, made by RTE. And uh, again, this was led by Barry Cummins, some formal investigative, investigative journalist, Owen Reynolds, investigative journalist, and Schiller is here as well. Here we have three investigative journalists. Um, Owen Reynolds probably was at Aaron's trial uh, far more than any of the rest of them. Now, I know we've been told Schiller was uh, being paid by the Independent to be there. I'm not sure whether he was there all the days he got paid for, because Owen Reynolds was the man that was there predominantly and um, would have a better grasp of the case, I suppose. But these three men, Reynolds, Schiller and Cummins have not asked the questions. How can Aaron Brady, who's five foot seven, be convicted of a crime obviously committed by a person or a man who is six foot, six foot one or six foot two? It's absolutely horrific. And this uh, primetime program was brought out, I think, as soon as Aaron was either convicted or sentenced. And uh, it was back in 2020. So they had this all pre-prepared. So they were doing statements with the guards and all the authorities before there was even uh, a sentencing or before there was ever a verdict from a jury. So that in itself shows very clearly that this whole thing was set up and how uh, hand in hand our mainstream media here in Ireland sickeningly work with uh, on Garda Siakona and corrupt Garda at that. So let's have a little listen to Prime Time. So there we have Mary admitting that once again, uh, total lies which contradicts the actual statement. Uh, I couldn't uh, discern the accent of the shooter, the man with the shotgun. So Mary's uh, statement again, sitting on the banks of a lake here, is a uh, tissue of lies. The man is absolutely deluded. He tells us once again about... Um, uh, describe the culprits. He said Joe was able to describe the guns. He was able to describe the culprits. Yes, 
Yet, yet again, Mary fails to say the man with the shotgun. Joe Ryan told him. Joe Ryan told you, Pat Mary. You are told on numerous occasions. The man who shot your supposed friend and colleague was six foot one or six foot two. And I think it may be time that at some stage Joe Ryan is going to have to come forward. We must be empathetic towards Joe Ryan and what he suffered and what he saw that night. That, that goes without saying. But for Joe Ryan to sit somewhere and imagine that it's okay for our son Aaron Brady to be in jail uh, for 40 years for a crime he physically could not have committed. So it's time, Mary, Kenna, uh, Mark Phillips, like we can see the whole investigation complete another mess. Pat Mary, in all of these podcasts, in all of the um, radio interviews he does, never mentions our friend Mark Phillips here. So there was obviously uh, serious um, issues between these two men. Otherwise, Pat Mary would be obviously heralding his colleague who brought uh, the case to the courts. But obviously, both of these men know the lies they are perpetrating. And uh, I'm sure it sickens most people to know, especially Phillips, that Mary is going around making money from his dead friend and colleague when they know they've made a complete mess of the investigation, where they use coercion and corruption and all sorts of uh, forceful uh, illegal activities to garner uh, false statements against our son, Aaron. So the premise of all Mary's uh, podcasts and radio interviews uh, are based on a lay. Once again, it's, there's no such thing as they had bother accents, local, loud, Monaghan. They, had, they didn't have or they did have. That does not exist because, for the very simple reason Joe Ryan told us he couldn't discern the accent of the shooter. And obviously the two Raiders was there in front of him. That's the only two Raiders he heard. And we know there was a Dublin accent at Bernard McShane's car uh, as she was attacked in the Lordship Credit Union car park. So Pat Murray is a layer. He is completely and totally deluded. And when we take this rhetoric all together with the, the foundation of Aaron's uh, campaign, the foundation of truth, the foundation of what justice should be for Detective Gard Adrian Donahue, Aaron Brady is only five foot seven. And never, not for any days of his life, was he ever six foot, six foot one or six foot two. That never happened. So I'm asking Mary, all these people, the likes of Reynolds, Schiller, uh, Mark Phillips, Norkin Stain, Brendan Grehan, uh, please, please show a little bit of respect for a man who lost his life in the lane of duty. The ongoing murder investigation is the biggest in the history of the state. Over 6,000 lines of inquiry, followed by the Garda team in Dundalk, many of whom were Adrian's friends. The first clue came from Adrian's colleague that night, Joe Ryan. He was able to describe the guns, he was able to describe the culprits, and I asked him in particular about their accents, and he said they were local accents, he said they were border. And that's what set off the uh, first step in this investigation.